he had great difficulty showing affection. He never really told me he loved me, and he never really complimented me either. If I did a great show, he would tell me it was a good show. If I did an okay show, he would say nothing. He seemed intent, above all else, I need tissue, I'm sorry. He seemed intent, above all else, on making us a commercial success, and that he was more than adept. My father was a managerial genius, and my brothers and I owe our professional success in no small measure to the forceful way that he pushed us. He trained me as a showman, and under his guidance, I couldn't miss a step. But what I really wanted was a dad. I wanted a father who showed me love. And my father never did that. He never said, I love you, while looking at me straight in the eyes. He never played a game with me. He never gave me a piggyback ride. He never threw a pillow at me or a water balloon. But I remember once when I was about four years old, there was a little carnival and he picked me up and put me on a pony. It was a tiny gesture, probably something he forgot five minutes later. But because of that one moment, I had this special place in my heart for him. Because that's how kids are. The little things mean so much. They mean so much. For me, that one moment meant everything. I only experienced it one time, but that one time made me feel really good about him and about the world. Now I am a father myself, and one day I was thinking about my own children, Prince and Paris, and how I wanted them to think of me when they grow up. To be sure, I would like them to remember how I always wanted them with me, wherever I went, how I always tried to put them before everything else. But there are also challenges in their lives because my kids are stalked by paparazzi. They can't always go to the park or to the movies with me. So what if they resent me when they grow older? What if they resent how my choices impacted their youth? Why weren't we given an average childhood like all the other kids you might ask? And at that moment, I pray that my children will give me the benefit of the doubt, that they will say to themselves, our daddy did the best he could given the unique circumstances that he faced. He may not have been perfect, but he was a warm and decent man who tried to give us all the love in the world. And when I think about this, of how I hope that my children will not judge me unkindly and will forgive me, forgive my shortcomings, I am forced to think of my own father. And despite my earlier denials, I am forced to admit that he must have loved me. He did love me, and I know that. So tonight, Rather than focusing on what my father did not do, I want to focus on all the things he did do, and on his own personal challenges. I want to stop judging him. I have started reflecting on the fact that my father grew up in the South, in the South, in a very poor family. He came of age during the Depression, and his own father, who struggled to feed his children, showed little affection toward his family and raised him. He raised my father and his siblings with an iron fist. Who could have imagined what it was like to grow up a poor black man in the South, robbed of dignity, bereft of hope, struggling to become a man in a world that saw my father as subordinate. I was the first black artist to be played on MTV. And I remember how big a deal it was, even then, and that was in the 1980s. My father moved to Indiana and had a large family of his own, working long hours in the steel mills, work that kills the lungs and humbles the spirit, all to support his family. Is it any wonder that he found it difficult to expose his feelings? Is it any mystery that he hardened his heart, that he raised the emotional ramparts? And most of all, is it any wonder why he pushed his son so hard to succeed as performers? so that they could be saved from what he knew to be a life of indignity and poverty. I have begun to see that even my father's harshness was a kind of love, an imperfect love, to be sure, but love nonetheless. He pushed me because he loved me, because he wanted no man to 
ever look down at his offspring. And now, with time rather than bitterness, I feel blessing. In the place of anger, I have found absolution. And in the place of revenge, I have found reconciliation. And my initial fury has slowly given way to forgiveness. I want to forgive my father and to stop judging him. I want to forgive my father because I want a father. And this is the only one that I've got. I want the weight of my past lifted from my shoulders. And I want to be free to step into a new relationship with my father for the rest of my life, unhindered by the goblins of the past. In a world filled with the hate, we must still dare to hope, keep hope alive. In a world filled with anger, we must still dare to comfort. In a world filled with despair, we must still dare to dream. In a world filled with distrust, we must still dare to believe.